The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Get back. We had one call that dropped already, so the one that wouldn't have been friendly uh, has uh, gone away. But we do have another call. Representative Harry Akinaro is here. He's a uh, uh, representative out of Laconia, which is my hometown and right where we are now. We have an email from uh, 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 Mike out in, uh, looks like Gahana, Ohio. I love it. Please send my most heartfelt thanks to Representative Akinaro for taking a stand uh, against uh, Obama. There are no words to explain how much it means to me to learn of this. It gives me hope when I often felt America has gone too far to recover. I, I understand, Mike. I understand. I'm with you. Okay. God bless you, Harry, uh, at Representative Akinaro. All right, he wants your name to go down in history, Harry. It probably will. It'll Staten go down Island, somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll be. Okay, for the call, the call, the call. Hello, you are on. Good morning. This it is. is. Uh, Neil Turner from California. Yeah, from California. Yeah, but I grew up in Rhode Island, and I spent my youth here skiing on Cannon Mountain. No so kidding. I know Cunia very well. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Do you ever come back? Uh, yes, I did. I, actually, I finally, last year, I went to my first fall foliage tour after growing up with it all. It was beautiful. <laughs> we went up to New Hampshire, and we went to see the old man in the mountain, and the son of a gun was gone. You see how things are changing? Our government, everything, uh, since he fell off the mountain, everything's going down the tube. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping that uh, the good representative will help bring it back, because we've been fighting this battle of this treasonous treasonous act by our government to install a rival government in the name of Barack Hussein Obama. And uh, I'm just so pleased and excited of uh, what the representative is doing. And I want to let him know that uh, we've got thousands, we've got millions out here ready to support him to see what we can do. Uh, and starting with Lieutenant Commander Walt Fitzpatrick mm -hmm. and his charges of treason. Yes, I thank you very much for your call and for your support. And as I was going to mention, uh, Lieutenant Commander uh, Fitzpatrick, uh, he's the one who got in touch with me. Because, and as I told him, I felt that, um, well, I know uh, Neil Young, I think that uh, we felt that we were all alone, that nobody's out there listening to what we were saying. But So it's really uh, great to, uh, I've been flooded and inundated with uh, uh, on my website, and I really appreciate it. But I do want the public to know that all I am is one of you. I just happen to be a legislator from New Hampshire, and maybe that draws more attention. But there's been people fighting the fight out there for over t uh, for two years, and uh, they're the ones um, that I feel deserve uh, the credit, and uh, I'm just glad to be part of it. Well, uh, okay, and I suppose you you are familiar with the efforts of uh, Mr. Rappaport, uh, who is also one of the representatives there in. Uh in New Hampshire. Uh, I was on a lawsuit with him uh, trying to bring this issue to the fore. Of course, what we find is that every state uh, secretary of state across the country has violated the Constitution, and uh, every citizen in every state has been violated. So every one of them can bring charges, and uh, that's why we're hoping that we'll get some publicity from it. Uh, the media will certainly try to uh, suppress this. Uh, they don't want to talk about it. I've just written an article that was posted this morning on the post email called, I Hope He Fails. And uh, the one that I expect to fail and want to fail is Rush Limbaugh, who initiated that statement. I want them to fail in the cover-up. And that would be the media and the Congress, and that would be everybody in any position of power, I hope they fail and the cover-up fails. And well, your efforts this morning to bring this to the fore are just fantastic. Well, when uh, when Rush Limbaugh said that right after Obama was elected, and I hate to say those words, but when you put a John McCain up against him who endorses him, I guess we got what we deserved. Uh, yeah. You could tell I'm no fan of John McCain's. Yeah. Um, we want him, of course we wanted him to fail, otherwise we, we were saying bring on the socialism, because he's still trying Obama. So Absolutely. I want him to fail at that, but what we're going to do is, uh, 
I've, I've, t- I've mentioned to my friend Harry that uh, we'll certainly dedicate an hour or more on Saturday morning when, when I'm I'm on every day 9.05 until 10, but on Saturdays we're here 8 to noon Eastern. I will try to make it later so some of you folks out in California don't have to get up so early. <laughs> so, uh, But I appreciate your call and everything you're saying. We have an email here from somebody else uh, in California. Uh, Laguna, uh, Laguna Niguel. Maybe he meant Miguel, I don't know, California. But anyway, he's a question. Does this man feel others will join him in this? Well, I Harry put it out there. It sounds like it woke up a lot of people across the country, got us talking about it, and we won't stop talking about it until 2012 after the election. Well, I'm going to, uh, there's a, a special um, session of uh, the legislature on the 14th of this month, and certainly uh, we'll look up Senator Rappaport and, uh, and some others I know and ask them to join me. Um, and that's where I'm going to leave it. If they choose not to, that's up to them. I will uh, continue to uh, join you in fighting the good fight. Well, thank you, thank you. And uh, a couple of uh, points to, to mention. You know, um, Lieutenant Commander Fitzpatrick's original charges had nothing to do with the birth certificate. Now, they will call us birthers, they will call us everything you can, mm-hmm. every name in the book. But his charges of treason, it still had nothing to do with the fact that Obama was not born here. I was uh, at the first press conference held on December 8, 2008, when we tried to put a stop to this thing, because I was an elector for the Constitution Party, and my electoral vote didn't count because it had to go against illegal electoral votes. And when California put his name on the ballot, I knew I was disenfranchised then. And, uh, you know, California went and counted the name of all uh, the electoral voters, and one of them had been dead for six years. Uh, an electoral voter for the Democrat Party in California named Irene Huber has been dead for six years. Everybody in Congress knew it. Every member of the 111th Congress is complicit in this treason. And that's how I got involved, because Orly Tates called me and she said, Mr. Turner, you have been disenfranchised. I would like to represent you. And she's been representing me ever since. What a tiger. Well, we, we, we've got to watch them every minute. Watch them. Every, they eternal vigilance. All right. Yes. On Saturday, I hope we'll hear from you again. And keep listening today to, for some of your neighbors across the country that I anticipate will call in. And as I said, we will uh, do. A, uh, I will uh, bring this up as a topic uh, Saturday. Um, I'm sure between 10 and 12 hour time. How's that? And so I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there. That's okay. True. See you then. <laughs> bye. And thanks for your call. All right, bye. Okay, 524-6288 and um, 1-800-830-8469. I better slide a break in now while we have the opportunity, Representative Akinero, if that's all right with Sounds you. Sounds good to me. Sitting here with royalty today. <laughs> It's a wonderful lead-in, but I, Representative Akinero is here, and we have a call on the phone, and the phone number is 524, uh, I'll be right with you there, 524-6288-1-800-830-8469. Are you there, caller? Hello? Let's try, I hope I don't lose this caller. Hello? One more try. Oh. There you are. Oh, I'm sorry. Good morning, Mr. Akinero, Mr. Young. Hi. Good morning. Um, I want to say to you, please do not allow others, like our, you know, that for which we are told only Tea Partiers and conservatives talk about, get rid of. Oh, I'm sorry. They said Sarah Palin caused the gunfight in January that shot out uh, Representative uh, Gib- Oh. But it's okay. And where is the outrage over a vice president stating that we're barbarians? I want you to know, Mr. Economo, do not allow those who are trying to stifle those of us Mm -hmm. who do believe in the Declaration, who do believe in the Constitution, who do believe in the Bill of Rights, not those who want to invent their own and force me to live my way. And let me just say this. Conservatives do not force their lifestyle down others' throats 
they allow others to live the way they wish to, within the confines of laws, as long as those laws are within the confines of our founding documents. Liberal socialist communists want to take power in our money, in our food, in our transportation, and force us to live the way they want us to live while they themselves are living the way that if it's a conservative, they could have lived anyhow. Okay. All right. I'm going to uh, I'll let that. you go. Thank but you. I just All wanted right. to let him know, don't let nobody stop him. Okay. And he does have many out here behind him. All right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we also uh, should add to that about Biden is uh, if he had his way, I guess the United States would be a one child per family deal, too. Well, of course, he agrees with uh, China. And... Uh, uh, I think she forgot about education too. That we're we're we're, we're indoctrinating the kids. Yeah, the government. Uh, mm. Yeah, the government schools are uh, pushing the liberal agenda without our consent. Okay, here we go. Hello, you're on. Morning, Neil. Hi. Morning, Harry. Good morning. Hey, did you get the chance to go talk to Ricky? I saw him and spoke to him briefly. Um, as per what you were. Uh, uh, talking about, I did email a couple of his uh, representatives there and waiting for their um, response. I would suspect I won't hear any. I would suspect you don't. You won't hear it either, Harry. Yeah, but they, uh, they I appreciate uh, you tuning me into the uh, uh, Burger Builder uh, website. Well, see, the the other thing too is uh, <laughs> when uh, Hillary was running against Obama, right? Oh. She was invited to Ontario, uh, Canada. They got pictures of her getting out of a limousine, going to a Bilderberg meeting. So really, it didn't make any difference, Harry, if uh, you know Hillary won or Obama won. That that's how they play the game against you and me. And yeah, that's probably. Pretty. So, what do you think about uh, Harry Akinaro, uh suggesting that uh, if uh, uh, the governor, uh, yeah, right, the community organizer becoming president, uh, that uh, he is a uh, uh, he's more interested in the, what am I trying to say, Harry? Say something. Guilty of treason. Guilty of treason, or certainly borderline on it. What do you got? You got something on that? Because that's what I'm doing right now. Well, basically what I look at is that uh, what's going on here with uh, Bernanke and uh, all the rest of our senators and congressmen who have failed us, they're all, you should be put up for treason, as far as I'm concerned. Because they, they've dragged that country. Our, our country is never coming back. And I believe, Harry, I don't know if you agree with me or not, because I, I agree with a lot of your points, and I'm sure you probably agree with a lot of mine. Our country is gone. It's, it's never coming back. I mean, we have 23% unemployment right now, Harry. And if you think that the Obama is going to take these college graduates and he's going to do, uh, you know, shovel jobs, people who are in computers and stuff like that, you think they're going to don their three-piece suits to pick up a shovel and a pick to, to start building roads, Harry? No, he isn't. And he's, <laughs> he's um, uh, any, any president that, um, that at least cared about this country would not have 300,000 illegal aliens there granted uh, work permits while we have millions of people in this country out of work and looking for anything they can do to survive. Uh, this man is doing everything to, uh, to destroy and tear down this cu country to make it socialist and yep. uh, take part in the one world order uh, that's going around in Europe. There you go. Right. And and you see what Europe is in, huh? Europe's in a mess. We're, we're in a mess, right. but they're in a bigger mess. All right, well, I suggest that uh, everyone who is listening today, either via the Internet or the radio, that you, uh, let's see, I have a, a guest plan for tomorrow. Uh, it'll be a local visit. I don't know if he'll stay the whole program, but Thursday, uh, what's the, what, Thursday and Friday and Saturday, I'll be, I'll stay right on this topic because we have to educate America that the man who is occupying the White House is not our friend. He's not my fellow American. At least LBJ called me his fellow American while he was sticking it to me. Yeah, right. But we have somebody out in California. They emailed to say they can't get in on the phone line. So I am Can, to, to, to get more uh, opinions today across this right. country. I'm going to, uh, 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 hopefully she will start ringing us up right now All at 524-6288 right. at 603 524 Neil, Yes. Let, let me straighten you out on one thing about Jimmy Hoffa, the old man, okay? There's a great book out there, all right? Harry, I want you to get this book and read it. It's called You Paint Houses, all right? You Paint Houses. And the president of the 
you know, uh, Pennsylvania Teamsters. His name was Frank Shera, and that's an autobiography from Frank Shera. And he admitted, all right, in the book, because uh, Jimmy Hoffa was the, the, the grandfather to his, uh, I mean, the godfather to his uh, daughter. He took him out. He's the one that shot Jimmy Hoffa, and Jimmy Hoffa ended up in the, you know, in some of the, the mob's uh, crematoriums. So he's not buried. Well, that's a heck of a way to treat the godfather of your child. That's well, all I that's, gotta say. That that's, but it's uh, in the book. You know, read the book, Harry. Uh, okay. okay, thanks. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Okay, five six zero three five two four six two eight eight one eight hundred eight three zero eight four six nine. I'm 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 uh, trying to move the calls right along, but this is uh, Christy out in uh, San Diego, and maybe that's her. I hope so. Hello, you're on. Yeah, good morning. My name's Walt Fitzpatrick, and I was uh, calling to contribute to the conversation this morning. Good well, morning, Commander. Lieutenant yes. Commander, how are you? I'm well, thank you for asking. Um, uh, there a couple things. Um, there, anybody who's listening to this radio program this morning uh, can file their own complaints naming Mr. Obama and Commission of Treason. Anybody can do this, and it's going to take large numbers. So uh, for Mr. Young, as he has... Um, Said this morning uh, about follow-on radio programs, uh, and, and and well done, sir. That's good news. Uh, anybody can do this, um, and without going into it this morning, uh, Mr. Young um, uh, and Mr. Akinero, Representative Akinero, uh, we can make sample letters available to anybody in the country on a moment's notice. Uh, this issue of treason has been out there for a long time. And Mr. Obama is now admitted his treason. There's no more question about it. Um, the the complaint for treason uh, has been out there since March of 2009. Um, he has not um, addressed it. He has not responded to it. In fact, he has accepted it through a silence. He's put his stamp of approval on it through a silence. Uh, he is arrogant in that admission of his treason. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to take... And other elected officials, uh, Representative uh, Akinero, uh, if you can encourage them to, you know, jump on board, you know, we'll, and you've got, just like Captain Neil Turner said this morning, calling from California, um, Captain Turner is a former helicopter pilot, served honorably in the United States Army. You've got a whole bunch of people standing behind you. So. Well, I'm going to do my best uh, here. And like I say, it's it's really not about me. It's about what this what we need to do to get um, uh, this treasonous person uh, 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 bring him down. And uh, all I am is just one of you trying to uh, bring it to the attention of uh, everyone. Yeah, and so that and so that the listeners understand, when we say treason here, this really is treason. It's it's precedented. It is the uh, the aspect of treason that we're speaking to here is. Uh, when any person forcibly resists the Constitution of the United States with the intent to install and operate a rival and competing government, that is that has been, uh, as a matter of precedent, declared an act of war against the United States of America. And Mr. Obama is operating a government which is not found in the in, you know in the Constitution of the United States of America nor any state constitution of this country. Mr. Obama commits treason. Every day he comes to work, um, and we have one example after the next. It's not an argument anymore. It's not a debate. The accusations against Mr. Obama naming him in commission of treason are unassailable, unarguable, and we're going to need large, large numbers of people to force. Um, and I, I should also add that you know any grand jury in the country, any grand jury in the country at this moment can stand up and say. Mr. Obama, we formally accuse you in commission of treason. And that accusation coming from the grand jury, known as a presentment, Mr. Obama had, the grand jury is the most powerful law enforcement agency known in human history. Any grand jury in the country today can stand up, they can, they can conduct their own investigation under their own authority and they can accuse Mr. Obama formally. They can call him in and ask him questions. They can call in his criminal assistants and ask them questions. Uh, and that's another push. So between uh, the grand jury uh, and then large numbers of people naming Mr. Obama in treason, um, we've got our work cut out for us. 
Uh, uh, Commander, could I ask you a question? Uh, this is Neil Young, but you probably know that by now. Yes, sir. A Akinaro has his own style of speaking. <laughs> it's that Staten Island. I've only been in New Hampshire th almost 40 years. Uh, well, I'll be honest with you both, gentlemen. I'm paying very close attention because it's, it's hard to discern which one is speaking. <laughs> really? I'm the taller one. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, Libya. Is that treason? Yes, sir. That's what I thought. We have no, no business and being in, fact, in Libya. It's interesting that you bring that up. Well, uh, I heard it all the time about Bush and how they thought he should be charged with treason, thrown out of office, strung up, and everything else. Well, now I'm talking about Libya. I'll be talking about uh, Syria. Why are we there? Well, you know, uh, there's a guy, I, you know, I matriculated at the United States Naval Academy. I'm class of 1975, and there's a guy who I know of because he was at Annapolis at the same time that I was there. His name is Stardivis. James Stardivis. Does that name ring a bell for you? I, it, it rings a bell, but I'm not going to pretend that I know all the particulars. He's the uh, four-star Navy admiral who's commander in Europe right now. Oh, <laughs> that's probably why, then. Yeah, Stardivis, Jim Stardivis. Mm -hmm. And um, he is as responsible, he is what I describe as a command racketeer. Uh, and that th this should be frightening, again, to all your listeners. You have military commanders in senior positions today who are no more obedient to the United States Constitution than is Mr. Obama. And they are working aggressively to destroy it. Uh, and, again, there are, there's one example of that after the next. But you just brought one up, which is, you know, our incursion into Libya. You know, at World War II, after the Japanese attacked in a surprise attack um, Pearl Harbor, when uh, FDR came uh, days later uh, to talk about the day of infamy to encourage a vote of war, declaration of war against the Japanese, and this is after they attacked us directly, uh, even though Hawaii was just a territory in the time, it was considered enough of the United States of America to be an, an attack on America. The president had to go to Congress, and as I recall, the vote was by it survived by one vote, the declaration of war. So how has, how has it changed today? Libya, you cannot go in and do that without the permission of the Congress. That is Mr. Obama's operation of a government that we do not find in our United States Constitution. Mr. Obama's signature a month ago on the uh, 2nd of August to stand up this select joint, this joint select committee on deficit reduction, which is this group of 12, and when you add Obama, it's 13, that's an amendment to the United States Constitution that did not follow the amending process, and the folks in New Hampshire in the follow-on process of ratification didn't get a vote. So, again, I'll stop now. No, well, you answered the question. I, I, uh, after reading what, you know, the definition of treason, I said, well, Libya popped right into my mind. I mean, there it is. Yes, sir. Mr. Obama is operating a government with his criminal, m political, military assistance. He's operating a government which is not found in our United States Constitution. We have a four-star general named Martin Dempsey, who's, you know, within weeks going to replace uh, Navy Admiral four-star Mike Mullen as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, and it was uh, General Dempsey, who was the senior operating military commander, who sent troops, military policemen, into a small community of Sampson, Alabama, on the 10th of March of 2009. He sent military troops into Sampson, Alabama, to stand in the streets to replace civilian policemen. Really? Uh, I don't want the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff thinking that he can send people into Laconia, New Hampshire, and have uh, Army military cops replacing your civilian cops or sheriffs or any other part of the country. And we have that going on in uh, Homestead, uh, Florida. You've got uh, military policemen from the Air Force affecting arrests of citizens, United States citizens, who are not under the jurisdiction of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. You have this going on in other parts of the country as well. Just two weeks ago, you had an Air Force, Air Force, let me say that again, United States Air Force-led raid into a civilian gun shop in Las Vegas, Nevada, mm -hmm. under Mr. Obama. I can go on. This is very scary stuff. They're setting up a military government within many, many communities in this country, and these are military commanders, again, no more obedient to the United States Constitution than is Mr. Obama. So we better take up this issue of treason and get real serious about it, and real quick. 
Uh, I think he's going to have us in all kinds of trouble before he leaves office, which I hope is uh, a little over a year from now. But uh, my question while you're speaking, uh, if we're going to do uh, our military, we, we don't even do anything about illegal immigration coming over the borders to, from Mexico into Texas, into Arizona, and we know that they are, uh, there's, a lot of them are killers because they're drug car, the drug cartel and drug lords and all this other stuff, and killing Americans on our soil, and we don't consider that an action that maybe that's where our army should be? I don't know. We're being invaded. Yeah, well, it's not just the, it's not just uh, well, the Mexicans. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, there are military commanders who believe that should be the case, but they are either removed from service or they are silenced. They are made to be quiet. Uh, it's going to take the will of the people to, to, to stand up and, and show itself in one way. And this is something, this is, you know, whenever you get done with a radio program or, you know, you know the, the condemnations of our government and, and, you know, people come away from that and they're saying, you know, what, what, what am I supposed to do? What, what can I do? Well, folks, what you can do is, um, and again, Mr. Young, we can make this, info, it's, a, it's available at the Jag Hunter website. No, uh, you know, it, it, we have sample letters there. We have actual letters that have been written and submitted. Uh, I've got one in front of me right now, which is going to be submitted later today. And as it happens, it deals specifically with uh, what you just spoke about, Mr. Young, which is the incursion of an invading force based in Mexico, which is being armed by Mr. Obama. Not only are they being armed by Mr. Obama, Mr. Obama is allowing them to, f to set up, establish operating bases here in the United States of America. These enemies of America are, uh, under Mr. Obama's stewardship, are operating from bases here on the homeland with guns that Mr. Obama gave them. And we're talking about some pretty high-powered, uh, heavy munitions and uh, explosives. Mr. Obama's doing this. So, again, uh, we have one act of treason after the next. Mr. Obama's treason is not a question anymore. It is a proven fact uh, in a number of ways that we can show and evidence these proofs. Uh, people need to start getting excited real bad. And I think when you said that, you know, if we allow him to continue, that this is going to get, you know, worse, or, you know, I think you get the wor wor wrong verb tense. I, I think we're already there. I think it's present tense. We're there. Mm-hmm. So. Now, uh... Jag Hunter. Yeah, uh, of course, it's the Jag Hunter. Three words. Yeah. The Jag, J A G, like Judge Advocate General. That's what mm -hmm. it's like. The TV show yeah. Hunter, uh, and it's um, the Jag Hunter as a phrase. Dot WordPress. W O R D P R E S S. Dot C O M. And uh, Representative Acanero, um, I sent it to you and also to Mr. Young. You were profiled yesterday uh, on OrbisMax. Dot com. Oh yeah, me. Well, yes, sir. Uh, New Hampshire legislator is the first elected official in the country to name Obama in treason. Mm -hmm. uh, that the uh, Orbis Max is a nationally recognized, internationally recognized news source. Jim Walker from OrbisMax dot com. He calls himself the Orb. Uh, has been working out of um, uh, uh, suburb of Seattle for years and years and years. Uh, Orbis Max is the. It started out as the Drudge Report for the Pacific Northwest. But now it's much, much, much more um, uh, wide in its um, uh, news coverage, and uh, it's it's um, it, it's a very, very big deal that uh, this uh, article uh, was published uh, at OrbisMax.com yesterday. It may still be there. I haven't checked this morning, and uh, he might pick up the interview that was done with um, you and Sharon Ronda yesterday. Sharon's uh, part one interview at the post and email, which is uh, the post email dot, you know, dot com, um, is up. And she did a great job. You did a great job, Representative Acanero. Thank you. It was very uh, nice speaking with you. Part two. Uh, but again, for the, you know, and, and Mr. Young, this, you have an opportunity here to start this as a national conversation, using the word treason publicly, freely, loudly, repeatedly, unre you know, relentlessly, because that's what Mr. Obama is doing. He's destroying our country, and he's part of this invading foreign force. He's working with them. So, well, I, I've, I've, I have felt for a long time that he wasn't our friend. He doesn't like America. I've accused him of that. 
uh, and I have a column that's a circulation 30,000 in New Hampshire at the Weir's Times, which uh, between you and Harry, maybe we can get something together and get something in there too, uh, a report or something, you know, uh, or a letter or a column or whatever. Well, and then again, there's also the, the Post and Email is an electronic newspaper run by managing editor uh, Sharon Rondo. Uh-huh. Uh, she has been working on this with this for over a year. She has done Herculean work here. Her efforts are, uh, you know, I, I, in describing the efforts and the the quality of work, uh, the again relentless nature of her reports. Um, I run out of adjectives. Miss Miss Rhonda, managing editor Rhonda, has done just a super job. Um, and as I say, uh, Representative uh, Akinero, you you're at you know you're front and center at the top of that uh, publication today, and you will be once again when part two comes out. And Mr. Young working with um, her, also uh, James David Manning from the Manning Report, has picked up the issue of treason, and uh, he will be uh, has been I should say has been made aware of um, Representative Akinero's uh, first accusation of treason coming from an elected official. This this is really a very big deal, gentlemen. All right, well, we're well, not gonna, when I know uh, Neil uh, personally, and um, we are not going to uh, give up the fight. We are going to continue on, so uh, whatever so happens, we will be there. A chance to talk. I apologize for trespassing on your time. Well, I, no, I didn't know how this was going to No, go, you had a I lot of information that I wanted to know, so... Uh, uh, you're forgiven already. Yes, sir. Now we will be, uh, we're here every day, but uh, Thursday and Friday and Saturday of this week I will return to this issue. Yes, sir. Fair winds and following seas to you both, and so request permission to go ashore if you don't mind. Permission uh, granted. Right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. All right. Uh, break time, uh, and this is interesting. We'll be right back. 524 1-800-830-8469. We'll see if our friend from San Diego can get in on time. 603-524-6288. All right, we'll be right back. Let's get back on the air because Representative Akinaro has uh, stirred up. Uh, and good for you. Good for you, Harry. Thank Pr- you, sir. Proud that, uh, to have you as a friend because uh, there aren't too many people in New Hampshire, as you know, Harry, that I uh, have a lot of faith in, but you're one of them. And now... A drum roll. Cindy from San Diego. <laughs> Yay. This is it. You're on. Hi. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. I would like to talk about Mr. Obama and treason. And let me first give the credit where credit is due to Lieutenant Commander Walter Fitzpatrick, who originally charged him in 2009. And because of the fact that Obama has remained silent of this, means that he is guilty um, big time. He sat as the UN Security Council Chair in 2009, and um, which violated Article 1, Section 9, Clause 8 of the United States Constitution, which states, no title of nobility shall be granted by the United States, and no person holding any office of profit or trust under them shall without the consent of the Congress, except of any present, emolument, office, or title of any kind whatever from any king, prince, or foreign state. So what Barack Obama did was, as sitting president, he sat as chair of the United Nations Security Council. He then began the war in Libya, not going to the Congress, but he went to the United Nations to get consent to start the war in Libya, which violates the Constitution in itself because we were not under direct attack. So whoever, and, and I hold all government officials guilty, the representatives that, I, that we have been contacting, every single one of them is guilty of the crime of misprison, of treason, if they remain silent. And you can be sure that they will all be held accountable by us citizens when the time comes. Right now, we just want Obama out of office. He's, he's, he's dangerous. He's mm-hmm. a very clear and present danger. Mm-hmm. He is trying to stifle our freedom of speech. I don't know if anyone knows about United Nations Human Rights Resolution 16-18. It, um, basically, it's going to make it a crime to criticize Islam. Now, it says religion in this resolution, but it was submitted by the country of Pakistan, a terrorist country, by the Office of Islamic Conference. They have since changed their name to 
oh, I'm sorry, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. And CARE, the Council on, is Council on American Islamic Relations, here in the United States, here very strong, these are their exact tactics to silence criti criticizers of Islam. Well, I'm sorry, you know, Islam is an ideology that is threatening our nation to the point of death, and to try to silence us on this is dangerous, it is subversive, it is seditious, and this is our basic First Amendment right of freedom of speech. And Mr. Obama is trying to take that away from us. We need criminal complaints written to our grand juries. We need him brought up on charges of treason. He is allowing illegals in here, giving them a legal wage for illegal workers. He is also allowing 10 to 30,000 Somali refugees, unchecked, unvetted, into the Bible Belt. This is outrageous. He is allowing all these illegals to come in with the unemployment rate where we are at, people on unemployment, welfare, food stamps, he is allowing more to come in to get votes for his reelection, not caring what it is doing to American citizens. We need jobs. He's giving those jobs to illegals. We need them out. So I'm urging everyone to write their own criminal complaints. You can find sample letters at the Jack Hunter's website, and we need thousands of those pouring in. I've started a petition to Congress. You can find that online at Petition to Congress. Um, I think something like 250 patriots have sent, I think, 778 letters to Congress. I tweeted, I'm on Twitter all day, I tweeted all of these, the petition, to all of the 85 members who voted against the debt deal, and I tweeted it to others as well, and I'm calling on Speaker Boehner. This is for calling for Obama's resignation, thinking, well, if, you know, Speaker Boehner and the Congress are you know, reluctant to say that he's guilty of treason, then maybe they could put pressure on him to resign. So that's what the petition to Congress is about. If anyone would like to sign up, please do. But we need criminal complaints coming in. We need Obama out of office today. He's dangerous. Yes, I, I filled out my, this is Representative Ackner, I filled out my, um, my petition, sent that in, and uh, I took your advice, um, Per your email, uh, no, a phone call, I believe that uh, I did a uh, um, start a Twitter account, and it's uh, did you really? Yeah, but, well, <laughs> I called my son and I said, uh, John, he lives in Virginia, and I asked him. I said, could you uh, uh, open a, a Twitter account for me? And he did, and uh, it's just Harry Akinero. Is uh, is all right? I will find you and I will hook up with you. I'm Luchadora Forty One. <laughs> oh, yes, I think I have that. <laughs> uh, is this? Uh, we, we do about everything around here. I have one listener 60 miles south of uh, Laconia, still in New Hampshire, where she says, the day you start recipes, I'm turning you off. <laughs> anyway, th this, is, uh, this has been a, a wonderful program today. I'm so happy I could be the host of it. Uh, The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.